Ah, the golden gun. The fiery firearm. The spicy Smith & Wesson. The habanero hand cannon. We all love to use this super to shoot our friends in their stupid faces. But have you ever stopped to ask yourself, how hot is the golden gun? Is it hotter than a cup of coffee? If Walker, Texas Ranger were a guardian, would he be a gunslinger? The answers to those questions will all be revealed right now. Very hot. Yes. What do you mean if? But seriously, I set out with the goal of finding out exactly how hot a golden gun shot is, and I got some pretty interesting results. Just like last time, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. However, there was an interesting issue which I'll talk about at the end. To start with, heat can be transported in a few different ways. Conduction is when it moves from a hot object to a cold one, when they are in contact. Convection is the reason why hot air rises. And radiation is the reason the sun heats the earth, and we don't all live on a snowpiercer train. In our calculations, we'll only be looking at conduction, to keep things simple. So we will mainly be using one equation for this, the 1D heat conductance equation. This tells us how much energy is required to transport heat in one direction in any kind of material. However, we are looking for a temperature, not the energy, so we'll need to rearrange this. Don't worry if you don't understand all the variables I've written here, I'll explain them in just a second. First, the change in temperature is the hot temperature of the golden gun shot, minus the cold temperature of the victim, so we can replace this in our equation. As all Americans know, the average human temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or 37 degrees Celsius for the rest of the world which in scientific units is 310 degrees Kelvin. Next, with a little algebra, voila, we have solved for temperature of the golden gun. Now, what do all these variables mean? Well, the heat energy is not the same thing as temperature. In our case, it's the energy required to completely incinerate a human. The height of the victim is pretty self-explanatory. The area here is the cross-sectional area of a human. I'll get into this more in a bit. The thermal conductivity measures how easily heat is transported through a material, and it's different for different types of materials. Again, I'll go into this in more depth later. And finally, the time here is how long it takes for the victim to be completely incinerated once the shot hits them. Awesome. Now all we have to do is find each one of these numbers and plug them in. Then we get temperature. But since this equation is just a little more complex than the one from the last video, I'll leave it up at the top so we don't get lost on what we're trying to find. Let's start with something easy. Here's our guardian. Now, to make things simple, we are going to replace this human with a human-sized cylinder made of human meat. Please don't demonetize this, YouTube. I, I know it seems weird, but it's actually a pretty good approximation. To make things even more simple, we will be shooting the Guardian in the head and imagining that the heat travels only in one direction, hence the 1D, from top to bottom. So the height of our meat cylinder <laughs> is the average height of a human, which is about 5 foot 4 inches, or 1.65 meters. Great. Next, we need to find the cross-sectional area. But what is that? Well, if you look at a person from above, then imagine drawing a line around what you could see, creating a little shape. The cross-sectional area would be the space inside that shape that you drew. Simple enough. Luckily, I found a paper that will give us a good approximation of this area. It's about 1.55 square feet, or 0.144 meters squared. Great, we're moving along. Next, we need to find the time it actually takes, in-game, to completely vaporize a guardian. So I bribed a couple of friends to go into a private match with me to let me shoot them in their dumb faces, for science. As you can see, at the exact moment of impact, their health bar goes to zero. So we can use that as our starting point. From there, it took about 103 frames for him to basically disappear. I repeated this a few times, and it averaged out to about 105 frames, which at 60 frames per second equates to about 1.75 seconds. Moving on. 
Now we need to find the heat energy required to completely vaporize a person. And I shit you not, I found an actual scientific paper sponsored by a real university that calculated exactly that. I'm just glad that they said this was all hypothetical in their abstract. I'll add a link to this paper and all my other sources in the description. As you can see, they reached a final energy of about 2.99 times 10 to the 6 kilojoules, or about 2.99 billion joules. That is a lot. It's over 2300 times the yeet energy of Atheon Stomp, and that's what you call a callback, kids. Just over half the energy of one ton of TNT exploding, and over twice the energy needed to melt a ton of steel. So there you have it. Golden guns can melt steel beams. One important thing to note here is that this isn't vaporization like we normally think of, like boiling a liquid. This is the complete dissociation of all the molecules that make up the body. So all the molecular bonds would be broken and everything would be separated into its elemental form. This requires a ton of energy to do, which is why the number is so high. However, given what we see in the game, I think it's the most accurate as well. We don't see a cloud of gas replace the body or anything like that, so it's what we're going to use. And finally, we need to calculate the thermal conductivity, K, of the human body. Crash course on conductivity. It's the measure of how easily heat is transported throughout the material. So as we all know, it takes a long time to bring water to a boil, but a very short time to heat up the metal pot that the water is in. This is because water has a low K and is a thermal insulator while metal has a much higher K and conducts heat very easily. But what about humans? Well, we aren't so easy. We are made up of a bunch of different types of materials, so we need to find the conductivity of each of those, multiply by the percentage of our mass that they constitute, and then add those up. And all of that looks like this equation. So we need to find all those percentages. As you may have heard, humans are about 70% water, and the conductivity of water is about 0.6 watts per meter kelvin. But what about the rest? We go back to the paper we used before. Since the researchers couldn't actually test on human flesh, because, duh, they used, and I'm being completely serious here, pork to simulate human flesh. Which, I know it seems weird, but it actually is a good analog to it. So pork has an average thermal conductivity of about 0.46 watts per meter kelvin. Finally, we're left with the bones, which make up about 15% of the body's mass and have a conductivity of about 2.28 watts per meter kelvin. We plug all of this into our equation and we get a total conductivity of the human body of about 0.831 watts per meter kelvin. Great, so now we have all the information we need to calculate the temperature of our golden gun shot, and I'll list it all here. All we have to do now is take all of those values and plug them into our main equation, and we get the result of, damn, 23.6 billion, with a B, Kelvin, or roughly 23.5 billion Celsius, or 42.5 billion degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. Like, really, really hot. For comparison, here's a chart of some of the hottest and coldest things in the universe. The inside of a nuclear bomb explosion is only about 10 million degrees Kelvin, or more than 2300 times colder than our shot. The core of a star is only 15 million, or about 1500 times colder. That's pretty insane. Now, there's only one problem with all this. Our golden gun shot can vaporize a human just as easily as a Vex Goblin, but they're made of completely different things and it takes a lot more energy to dissociate a bunch of metal than it does human flesh. So let's take a look at what it looks like in-game. As you can see, it took about 108 frames to completely disintegrate the goblin, which is roughly the same amount of time as it did for our guardian. But if we look back at the equation, we can see that if the heat energy required goes way up, but the time it takes is the same, then we will get a much higher temperature. So how does that work? Well, to be frank, it doesn't. At some point, we have to realize that this is a game, and the developers probably didn't go through these calculations when designing the Golden Gun. I mean, we could say that the Golden Gun uses light, and so it could adjust the temperature of the bullet based on the target, but 
That's a little head y for my taste. Still though, it was a really fun little experiment, and if nothing else, you can tell your friends that the minimum temperature of the Golden Gun shot is over 25 times that of the infant universe, 100 seconds after the Big Bang. That's pretty cool. There were a few other things I didn't cover here, like why I chose to replace a human with a meat cylinder for the calculations, or how that really works, or using color to determine the actual Golden Gun's temperature, not the shot, the gun. I didn't want to go into all of that here because I think this was already a lot, so I'm going to, for the first time, make a follow-up video for my patrons. I'll put it out in the next week or so, so join up if you want to learn some more. The link is at the end of the video and in the description. Big thanks to Seth Wright for becoming the latest member, you rock dude. Other than that, thanks to everyone for watching, and if you didn't hear, my last video won the Bungie Movie of the Week, which, wow. So thank you to Bungie for that. I will see y'all next time.